Hi, welcome to my certified wildlife habitat. I had this yard certified a few years ago and I thought I would show you some of my highlights. Today I'm going to focus on my pollinator garden that I've started a few years ago. It's a work in progress, but let me introduce you to some of the plants I've incorporated. This here was all grass. Uh, like everybody else, we had a yard that was your typical grass yard. And as I learned more about the plight of monarchs and pollinators in general, um, can, I decided to do this here garden. It is street side, and this is looking from the street. Right in front, you can see some of the milkweed plants that have come up. This garden is probably about, I think it's three years old. This will be the third season that I've had this garden. So I've been working out some issues with it. But the main focus I did want to get in here was the milkweed for uh, rearing monarchs. The one plant that seems to really have taken very well has been cut leaf coneflower. These here get to be about eight feet tall. They have a yellow flower that is related to sunflower. And goldfinches love the seeds. And as you can see, it's easily spread. This was one plant originally that I purchased through the Monongatuck Audubon uh, native plant sale. And it's spread but it's a great plant. It makes a nice border, nice tall border. This is looking down the garden from the driveway to the edge of the property. It's not that big a space. It's maybe eight feet by 15 or 20 feet in length. So you don't really need a whole lot of space to get some pollinator uh, pollinator garden going. And here on this side, I have a um, sweet pepper bush right here in front, and a spirea, which is not a native, but it was a plant I decided to keep. It is getting ready to bloom again. And this one to the left is a type of raspberry. I'm not sure where it came from. It's seeded in somehow, uh, but I decided to keep it. It does need a little pruning, and it gets these nice whitish flowers on it. It does spread by runner. Um, the branches will drop down and root in. So I'm deciding how to uh, control this plant and keep it here on the corner, but um, you know, maintain incorporating it. This one here is tall tick seed, also a purchase from the Monongatuck Audubon plant sale. This here is uh, wild indigo, and here early in the season, I'm getting a variety of little pollinators. I have this little Zabalon skipper that is resting on the purple flowers. So the purpose of this garden certainly is showing itself. I love being able to discover different things that come into the garden. I've let some of the grass grow wild. And it's been really cool seeing some of the different things. This little damselfly that's resting on the different plants. I am really excited to see this. This is a 
monarch caterpillar. Probably a second instar. Not quite a half an inch long. I'm happy to see this one is thriving. And this was the whole purpose of this garden. There's another caterpillar. It's eating some of the flowers on milkweed. This is common milkweed. As needed to register with the National Wildlife Federation to have the property certified, you have to provide food, shelter, and water. And I do have a couple of bird baths in this garden, and this is one of the feeding stations, well, two of the feeding stations, where I offer, oops, sorry for the shake, I offer um, a hummingbird feeder with homemade nectar water. And I have some jelly cups that have been bringing in my catbirds and uh, Orioles. And a homemade cup feeder that I am proud to have made. So that was a, just a, a cup from uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Popped some holes in it, strung it, and I put blueberries in there. I will be stringing the slinky in a more appropriate manner uh, because unfortunately the squirrels have taken to climbing this here and trying to get to the jelly. I've had a couple of the cups stolen. Uh, these feeders I purchased at the Fat Robin in Hamden. So they've been good enough to um, supply me with some extra cups here uh, when I needed them. They were good enough to order them. And I do have a couple of hooks here also from the Fat Robin. I don't have anything up on them just yet other than an empty grapevine piece. Uh, I will put some more jelly out and some more uh, grapes shortly. And there's one of my birdhouses. This one here currently is housing some house wrens that are nesting in here. And here's one of my catbird friends. And there they go. Here's one of the other houses, kind of buried within the middle of the garden, also housing house runs. I'm hopefully going to be seeing babies soon out of this nest. So last week I went to one of my favorite stores that sells native plants local to our area, uh, Nature Works in Northford and I picked up a bunch of different plants that I will be planting into the garden. This is one of my favorites. This is Wendy's Wish. It's a salvia. Gets these nice long tubular flowers. Hummingbirds absolutely adore this plant. And I have some Nipita, catnip, also a nice hummingbird magnet. Pollinators love this one as well, as you can see some of the little bees around it. This one here is an Agastache, nice yellow. The 
this one here is an Agastache. Butter yellow. And of course, the all important milkweed. This one here is Asclepius incanata. Swamp milkweed. And then I have a, another salvia, Caradana. Nice deep purple flowers. Another one that the pollinators really like. I will get butterflies on this. Sometimes the hummingbirds will check it out. This is a hardy geranium named Roseanne by Blue Label. This little one here, I believe, is an obedient plant. My friend had to thin her group out from her yard, so she gave me some of these transplants. Thank you, Nancy. And then this is a sleepless. This one here is Kufia, David Veridi. And the hummingbirds have already been checking this one out. And I have Bee Bomb, Monarda. And another salvia. This is an annual variety. Nice red color. Hummingbirds also like this one. And then some oxide daisies. Because I love daisies. And this one here is Blazing Star, Liatris. And then the flower stalks are just beginning to develop. And here's Common Milkweed. I'm going to start this in another section. This is Asclepius Syriaca. And then another salvia. This is called Lady in Red. Nice little red color. This one's here. This one I believe is an annual in our zone. How many birds also like this one? I have loaded up the feeders. Some jelly, fresh jelly and grapes. Cat birds are here. I just had a female Oriole that came in. Okay, so I've loaded up the feeders. They have some fresh jelly, blueberries, and grapes. I just had a Baltimore Oriole female here getting some jelly. And I've laid out what I'm going to do with my plants, at least I think. And some of them are not happy with me because it's getting rather warm and they're wilting a bit. So I'm gonna work on getting these installed. And the next time I see you, hopefully everything will be done. And I'll show you the different things that come in and visit. And we'll check on the progress of the monarch caterpillars. Hopefully they'll avoid being eaten by the, the birds that are coming in. So thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. And hopefully I'll see you the next time. Don't forget to su subscribe to my channel.